I'm going to give you a hint as to the country of origin of the cuffs that we'll look at today. Ready? There. You get it? Want to see it again? How about this? That's right. The cuffs that I'll be looking at today are from England. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Off the Cuff, and today I'm going to show you a pair of cuffs that I got at the Lancaster Lock Show. This is the second pair that I bought. Um, I only got two pairs this year, but the ones I got are really good, and I'm very, very, very happy with them. <laughs> it's kind of horrible when you're trying to decide which ones to buy, and what, you know what I mean, when you only have limited funds, etc. So anyway, what I got was... An awesome, awesome pair. And my first pair, by the way, of true backstrap Darbies. Look at the finish on these bad boys. Beautiful. Now, there are, they also have the matching keys, two of them, and they match. They are original with the cuffs because the numbers match up, which I'll show you in a bit. I had a choice between these and a pair of solid state, and I figured, you know what? These are just too good to pass up because the condition, the age, and all that. Uh, I think they're pretty much late 19th century. I thought they were earlier. Well, they might be earlier. Um, you know, it's really difficult to date the cuffs. Sometimes you go by the, because uh, uh, they didn't really have serial numbers on them. One way of doing it, you know, it, it's not very accurate, but, it, you know, according to Joe Lauer, is the, you know, the, the keys design of the key is sometimes a way to date them. Also, on Hyatt's, if it says, you know, uh, British made, they're later. And if it says warranted wrought, they're later. But anyway, what's a backstrap, you ask? Well, a backstrap is simply a way of manufacturing the cuffs. And I'll show you on the other one. This is what's known as the backstrap right here. And the, the way these were made, if you can imagine... I also like those little nasty teeth right there. Look at that. That is cool. What the, these would be one solid piece of metal, which you can see on the open one, right? And it forms like a tongue. It, it comes to a point like that. So imagine that straight out. And what they would do is they would thread this part here through the hinge. I'm sorry, guys. It's really hard to see. You can see the spacing. See the, oh, see the spacing in here? Okay, so the, the tongue, the extended part, would be threaded through, folded back on the rest of the bow, and then they would hammer it into place. Okay? Now, I know you want to say, well, what's that difference between that and, and the other hinges? Uh, there's also... Uh, Pretty much general consensus that back, back straps were manufactured earlier than other Darby's simply because it's easier to thread that through, that extended piece, and hammer it down than it is to construct a hinge with a pin. Which, of course, is the way that regular Darby's are. Okay, now I, I chose a pair out of the collection that are similar in finish and, uh, you know, a little bit later, of course, but. They're very, I think they're similar in age too, just because of the the type setting and the, and the uh, the way that the the numbers are stamped. Back straps are much thicker and heavier. Uh, they're more, you know, the the bands are wider. And here is the regular Darby, the regular Hyatt, same company. And I'll show these for comparison. Okay, look at the difference. See how the back strap would be threaded through and hammered down? And on the regular, later editions, or later models, and more refined, and it's much more difficult to make a hinge like this with a pin through it than it is to simply, you know, a, any blacksmith would do this one. But this really took some craft, craftsmanship. But look at the difference as far as thickness, okay? Even the, the backstrap swivel is a little bit, I guess, 
bulging in the middle, a little bulbous, compared to the other ones, later ones. The attachment ring right here is a little cruder and thicker again. Uh, and even the rings are a little bit heavier. It's almost like in America we would have the prison models, you know, of say maltbees are thicker than the patrolman and beans and all that. Back straps take a screw key, just like, you know, all Darby's do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the, the comparison of the keys. I don't know if you can see it, but it says Hyatt and a number one. And this is a later one. It actually says Hyatt uh, 60. Yeah, 60. Now look at the difference in the shapes of the keys. Okay, these are, are more like, I guess, like an ace. You know, like shaped like the ace on a on a playing card so that's cool too okay you can also see the the hole that goes the bolt goes through it's a little bit different and also on the locking tube i don't know what the purpose of these teeth these notches were but as you can see on the regular height, you just have that one notch where the key, you know, digs into a little bit. But look at the smoothness. See how smooth that is compared to the back straps. Okay. So here we go again. And even the tubes, look at the lock tubes. Back strap, regular. Okay. Much thicker, heavier, uh... Not necessarily more secure, but, I mean, it's just a, a more massive cuff. And then Hyatt, of course, had the other ones. And when I say Hyatt, I'm just saying it because these are Hyatt, so I'm going to compare them to Hyatt. I'm not going to compare it to my Froggets or any of the other manufacturers. We'll just look at the comparison from between the same company. Okay. Here's the Superintendent model, which came much later. And these are extremely light. I think I did a... If I didn't do a, a off-the-cuff on... Superintendents, I will. Okay, I promise. Okay. Now these superintendent, you can see they these ones they had the extra link right there. So it's one, two, and then the swivel. Regulars are just one. But wait you see the look at the difference in thickness there. It's like these are the big brothers to these guys, you know. These are the grandfathers, actually. Different size lock tubes. Okay. And I'll, I'll show you all the markings on these as well. The back straps are much more massive. Okay. On this particular set of back straps, uh, you know, sometimes on top of the lock tube there, they have little stampings, which people think is to identify which individual uh, employee made them. These... It's very light, but it seems to be an O. I really don't, I'm, I'm sorry if you can't see it, my camera's not. Okay. Then on the strap, letter one, right there. Okay. And where's the marking? Well, it's right here. See, hi it. Trying not to get the glare, guys. Sorry. Like that. Just high it. And then right down the bottom, which is kind of weird. At the very bottom of the bow, where the attached ring is, there is the number two. You see it? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Number one. Okay. And watch, this is cool. I, I noticed this when I got them home. Look at the key. The number one on the key and the number one stamped on the cuff itself are identical. Identical. I don't know. They didn't have fonts back then. But anyway. Okay, so we got the Hyatt name. We got the number two on there and the number one on the back strap itself. See, I don't... I. <laughs> 
I thought maybe it meant part number, like this would be part one, this would be part, so that when they assembled it, but it doesn't make sense because it's on the same piece of metal. That's another theory that I was completely wrong on. On the later models, Hyatt Best, and it's kind of scratched out, Warranted Wrought. And on this side of the bow, it says Hard, because in the catalogs of Hyatt, you could see that it would, you could purchase ones that were harder steel, so they were marked hard and they were a little bit more expensive. Um, now, like I said, I was really excited to get my first pair of real back straps, okay? Well, what's, what else is there? Oh, well, there's also what's known as false back straps, okay? These came much, much later. And this is a false back strap, okay? This one uh, came out in 1943. Okay, now uh, our RCS company, Ruben Craddock and Sons, and, and a few other manufacturers made false back straps that were cast. They weren't actually created the old-fashioned way during World War II. And the false back straps are very similar because they use the wider piece of metal, piece of steel here for the, the bow, for the shackle part just like the original back straps. But here's the difference. The false back strap was cast and then the pin was put through. As you can see, that was not hammered down, okay? That was not hammered down, that was actually cast. And you can see the difference between them. See how this spacing right here? That little spacing that proves that that's a true back strap, it doesn't exist on the false back straps. I don't know why they made false back, I think maybe just they they made, uh, decided to make a cast and the first pair of cuffs that they grabbed was an original back strap or it, maybe it was, I don't, they wanted it to look more massive and, and they just wanted a heavier cuff. Maybe somebody thought they could break the hinges on the, you know, the superintendents if they used them on POWs or prisoners, uh, you know, like army guys or whatever that had a little too much, you know, so they would use these and they just wanted something a little heavier. But look at the difference again. And now to compare the inside of the false back strap with the true back strap, bear in mind these are different manufacturers, so the curvature is different. Okay, the false back straps from World War II have this little bulge here, which the regular ones don't really have. Okay, but here's the inside of the hinge mechanism for a false back strap, and you can see the little space there, same as the real ones. Can you see? I'm sorry. There we go. That's the size difference. I mean, the difference between the fake and the real. But anyway, I feel really lucky and I'm very pleased with buying these, adding these to the collection. I always wanted a pair of real back straps. The mechanisms are fantastic. Just by feeling, I mean, British Steel, besides being a Judas Priest album, is also a really, you can really tell the difference between British Steel when you hold something made in England, you know, vintage, with the... Uh, the reproductions that came later and that they're still making, you can just, there's something about the feel of the British steel that gives it away, you know? Like, you, you could probably identify, once you get enough of these Darbys and Hyatts and the different makers from England, you, you can actually tell by touch which is a real cuff and which isn't. In other words, which is a real vintage cuff and which is like a reproduction. So, but... I, and another uh, thing that made me very pleased with buying these is the fact that it came with the two keys. I mean, it, it's just, you never find them. You're lucky if you find a pair of cuffs this old with a key, even if it's not the one that came from the factory. But to get it with two, oh, thank you, D. That's really something else. And that's what they look like on the wrist. Uh, this is my Hyatt drawer, one of the Hyatt drawers uh, for hand cuffs, not the leg irons. It's really nice to be able to add another 
example, another style of manufacturing of from the same maker. You know, that's one one more cuff that I can check off the list. I still need, of course, a Sheffield, and I still need a solid state. But you know, now I have the Hyatt backstrap, regular ones. Uh, you know, 1960 adjustables, superintendents. It's just really a good feeling to be able to add one more that I didn't have. You know, there's even more back there. There's still room in here, though, for the Sheffields and the Solid States and any other variation that I don't have. But it's really cool to be able to check that one off the list. So thanks again to everyone who made that possible. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And please leave in the comment section anything you want to uh, uh, request or, you know, if there's a pair of cuffs in my collection that you saw in the background or whatever and you want to see more of it. Um, as always, if you have cuffs that you want to send to me to donate to the collection, please leave a comment and we'll get in touch so that I can give you the where to send them. I want to grow my collection so that I can preserve them for the history of them. Also so that I can make more videos for you guys. Uh, you know, the, the thing about the handcuff collecting community, it just, I'm sure other areas of collecting, you know, like stamps or uh, uh, postcards or whatever. I, I don't know, I, I've talked to some of them people and I think that handcuff collectors you know it's it's really something because when you go to the to the lock show and you see like the handcuff guys all bunched together you know and and when somebody from outside our circle comes in you know they're welcomed and and we're always happy to impart information and you know share our knowledge and everything with with the other lock collectors uh and and every year it seems like you know Trying to get more people into the hobby and 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 uh, you know expand our knowledge of of everything. There's uh, if you go on the, you know ham, if you go on handcuffs.org, you know, which is my favorite site, you can actually you can, you'll just see in the forum how everybody loves to share information, and I'm not really sure that that applies to other uh, collecting hobbies. You know, I'm not I'm not sure that people that collect postcards, for example, or stamps, yeah, they get together and they have their conventions and stuff. But there's, there doesn't seem to be the same camaraderie and, and, and really good friendships that grow out of handcuff collectors. Anyway, thanks again for watching. And please, 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 if you haven't already subscribed, tell your friends, too. Uh, the more subscribers and the more views we get, the more I'm able to share with you guys uh, stuff from the collection. So I really hope you enjoyed it. And... Um, Actually, I hope you guys enjoyed it a little more than Toby did. <laughs> Toby, are you bored? No, you just curled up. You need a good boy. Yes. Toby the Wonder Dog, everybody. Look at him looking at me. He's such a goof. We'll see you again next time. <laughs>